So I'm making this video to ask the question of uh, how can the psychiatric dehumanization of man, of humankind, be stopped? How can the psychiatric dehumanization of humankind be stopped? And what is the, what is the psychiatric dehumanization of man? The psychiatric dehumanization of man is reducing humankind down to the brain. The psychiatric, I'll say it again, the psychiatric dehumanization of humankind is reducing humans down to their brain. Rather than being moral agents, the psychiatric dehumanization of man is reducing and thinking of humans as nothing more than a product of the neurochemical impulses in their brain. That is what the psychiatric dehumanization of humankind is. And how can that be stopped? It can be stopped by eliminati eliminating the insanity defense and civil commitment. That's probably the best way. You know, voluntary psychiatry should be allowed. Involuntary psychiatry is effectively enforcing or forcing upon humans a pseudo-medical pseudo cult. And a cult being a new religious movement the new religious movement being psychiatry and the tenets of that new religious movement being that humans are a product of their neurochemical and their behaviors are a product of their neurochemical impulses and simply that nothing more nothing less that's my understanding of it and then the in civil commitment so yeah so civil commitment imprisons individuals who've been deemed to be a danger to their own self or others. And by danger to their own self, that means they're going to possibly kill them, kill their body, stop their body from functioning. And by being a harm to others, that means possibly stopping others' bodies from functioning. Now, psychiatric civil commitment stops them by imprisoning them in a psychiatric ward, either at a county or state level, for the most part. And, you know, these people... They can be put on like a something, you know, it depends on state to state, but often it's like a 70, 72 hour hold. And then beyond that, if they're, you know, unwilling to voluntarily be there, um, then they can be put uh, under a court. They can go to court and they can have a judge. In some states, my, my understanding is that some states, just a judge, one individual, can imprison them. And in some states, you have a right to a jury. But either way, it's the people who've committed no crime. Is people who want to kill, stop their own body from working, which should be a human right. It should be considered a human right to do that. Or um, people who have not, you know, rather than conspiracy to hurt others, you know, it's a, a harm to others, you know, so I'm going to hurt somebody else. And again, rather than saying, trying these people under the criminal justice system, they're tried as being, you know, a danger to self or others and then civilly committed rather than imprisoned. Anyway, so yeah, um, <laughs> so yeah, civil commitment and the insanity defense should be abolished. I have other videos on this. You can read books by Thomas Sass, Thomas S-Z-A-S-Z, -S -Z. he passed away in two th 2012, a Hungarian-born psychiatrist. I'm not, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel, but psychiatry is a pseudo-medical pseudo cult means it's fake medicine. Real medicine cures real diseases. Real diseases being things like broken bones, cancer, leukemia, diabetes, Alzheimer's, neurosyphilis, HIV and AIDS, the flu, viruses, bacteria, fungal, protozoa infections, alcohol poisoning, However, things like schizophrenia and bipolar, obsessive compulsive disorder, depression, anxiety, there is no biological test, unlike all the other aforementioned things I've mentioned for the most part. You know, so either they can be diagnosed um, pre mortem or post mortem, so while a human being is alive or after their death, but things like schizophrenia, bipolar, obsessive compulsive disorder, depression, so on and so forth. 
there is no objective medical test for those. Hence the term pseudo-medicine, as in not real medicine. And then a cult is in a new religious movement, is in the religion being, you know, a philosophical and moral and almost spiritual tenant that these people should be stopped from, you know, ending their own life here on earth. That's a theological belief, in essence, implicitly, that somebody is better off living as, he is, you know, a human being on this earth rather than somewhere else. That should be, and again, we should not necessarily encourage suicide. We should probably discourage suicide and we should peaceably, peaceably, non forcefully try to persuade non violently, non coercively humans from, you know, killing their own self, from stopping their own body from working. However, forcibly doing that is not ethical, it's not right, it's not moral. Just as chattel slavery was not ethical or right or moral two hundred years ago, psychiatric slavery is not moral or right today. That's the truth. You don't have to believe me, but I'm on the right side of history. So, you know, take it or leave it. It's up to you. Um, so, I don't know. I think I'm going to end it about there. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Please share this video with others. Watch my other videos. Um, visit my websites. And uh, subscribe to this channel. Toodaloo.